here we are, first screen screenshot we've got is a lovely, beautiful picture of the packaging. If I move on to the next screen, so again, some more, you can see these are computer generated images, marketing images of the top of the chip and the bottom of the chip. And the thing to notice is that the die and the, well, not the die, but the uh, chip itself is not rectangular. It's, um, uh, sorry, not square, it's rectangular in, in dimensions. So this is quite an important thing, uh, something I'll be mentioning in future videos. Um, and this is a, uh, obviously a photograph of the die. Now I initially thought this was a picture of one die just tessellated, uh, just replicated uh, around the picture. But if you notice, each die has got slightly different colouring. And even if I zoom into these two, you'll see there's like specks of dust, these little white dots and this little bit of hair or something here that's not in this one or in this one. You can see each image. So what I think this image is, is a picture uh, that zoomed in on a wafer of the dies. Um, you know, there's about 10 or 12 dies there. I don't know how many normally are on a, on a wafer, but it's it's probably many more than that, maybe 50 or 100 dies. So it's quite interesting. And if you notice the layout, I'll show you an image in a minute from the product brief that shows what these components are in the die. So if I zoom in on this one, see it a bit closer, these four boxes are actually the P cores, the performance cores. So this is obviously from the um, i12900 CPU, which has got eight cores. As I say, they're hyper-threaded. don't think you can actually see where the hyper-threading is. There like, doesn't seem to be any real duplication within those boxes. And then up here are the eight performance, uh, sorry, efficiency cores. So you can see there's a block there that looks the same as that block, that block and that block. And you'll notice there's two sets of four here. And I, I believe I'm right in saying that each, uh, each block of four is a unit in itself. So I think that these, from what I remember that I've read, that these four share the same cache lines, which is this block here. And likewise, these four share the same block but they are individual cores despite that so you can have eight individual um, threads running on each of the eight efficiency cores likewise you can have uh, 16 threads two each on each performance core and as I say each performance core has got hyper threading so it's two threads per core um, and then there's other bits here for the GPU and thread director and I think this bit here is the PCIe lanes, uh, the uh, interface to the outside world. Um, so if I actually get that product brief image up, which is that one there, you can see here there's those big eight, four big boxes, they're the performance cores, there's the caches down the middle and you can see the little E's there, which are the efficiency cores, and as I say, there's the graphics, media, there's some memory there, um, and the GNA and so on, PCIe lanes there. Yeah, the die image is actually the upside down compared to this image, so the PCIe lanes are at the top of this image, whereas in the die image, they're actually at the bottom, so what we saw was upside down compared to this image here. Um, so, yeah, if I just jump forward in this pro product briefing to this page here, it lists all the uh, features, at a glance features. I won't, as I say, dwell on this. You can pause the video if you wish to read what's on there or go to the Intel website to read that. And there's some more stats about the first three um, processors that were released on the 4th of May. So there's the 12900. Um, the K is unlocked, so you can overclock the K versions. And the F, I believe the F, to me, how I remember it, the F means it's free, and it's free of the um, built-in graphics. So the K is the unlocked version with built-in Intel graphics, um, UHD graphics 770, and the F is the one that hasn't got that built-in. So if you've got the KF version, you need a discrete graphics card to be able to use the 
the computer system. Then there's a 12, so the 12900 has got uh, eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores, so 16 threads plus eight efficiency is 24 threads in total, you can see there. The 12700, the i7 12700, that's got eight performance cores again, but only four efficiency cores, so it's not far behind in terms of number of threads it can uh, use compared to the 12900, it's only four fewer threads and they're only the efficiency threads, so it's 20 in total. And then the i5 12600K and KF, that's got 10 performance cores, sorry, six performance cores. Um, actually, I'm sure that should say... I think that's a mistake there. If it's got eight performance cores, the hyperthread, that should be 16 plus four, which would equal 20. So that looks like an error to me. Uh, likewise with this, if it's got six performance cores, that should be 12 plus four, which is 16, which ties up with that number. So I think this number here is wrong in both ca on, on the i7 and the i5 varieties. Um, have to check that if that's of concern to you you're looking at either of these two uh, be worth uh, looking into that and also you'll notice the base frequency and the e, e core the, the performance and the e core frequency is a difference across the range um, as well as the uh, upper frequency but apart from that the um, uh, uh, well, the cache size the level 3 cache size is different Apart from that, the processes are identical. Um, another, so that's the uh, product brief. Got something here about the chipset, some details about the chipset. Again, there's a lot of information there about what the default Z690 chipset offers. Obviously, when you buy a motherboard, you probably find that some of these features are not implemented depending on the level of the motherboard so if it's a basic motherboard you probably won't get for example Wi-Fi made available or Optane support made available um, but obviously the upper uh, in the upper ranges you will get more of these features enabled um, so that's that again if you want to read that you can either download it from Intel or pause this video to read that um, what I will go on to is this image here which is quite interesting it shows you the um, layout of the chipset as compared to the core so the CPU offers this number of lanes PCI lanes uh, new features uh, it's PCIe version 5 is available um, and there's two different layouts I believe they call this bifurcation where you can have one 16 lane PCIe um, and one uh, they call them readiness, name, readiness lanes, so basically I think they call that because there's no PCIe uh, device, PCIe 5 device available at the moment. So what it's saying, they're, read, they're readiness, ready and waiting for any device that appears later on in the year. Um, and with that there's one 4 lane PCIe 4 uh, interface or that can be split into two eight PCIe five lanes and the one four lane PCIe version four interface. Then there's four independent DP HDMI displays. They're 4K displays, so it's four 4K displays that the CPU can directly drive. And then uh, memory-wise, there's DDR5 up to 4800 mega transfers per second or DDR4 up to 3200 mega transfers per second and as far as I've seen there's no motherboard that offers both of these it's one or the other um, I imagine to build that in would be quite expensive so I wouldn't have thought you'd see that at the moment although that is a, unless it's architecturally impossible it might not be um, it might be something that we see in the future that a motherboard offers both of these um, options available. Um, it could be that it offers, say, two slots with DDR4 and two slots with DDR5, and you can use one or the other, but never both. Uh, that may be a possibility. But at the moment, there's no such motherboard. Uh, certainly when I last looked a few, a few weeks ago. Um, and then we've got 
PCIe Express 4 uh, from the chipset. Um, so there's up to 12 lanes there, 16 lanes of PCIe 3, um, 8 SATA, 6 gig ports, and they can each be disabled as well from the chipset. And then we've got a numerous number or numerous number of uh, USB ports. Um, you can see it says 4x 3.2 Gen 2x2 ports, 10 USB 3.2 2x1 ports, 10 USB 3.2 1x1 ports and 14 USB 2 ports. Now, I can't think that I've seen when I was looking for my own motherboard. Um, I can't remember seeing any motherboard that had all those enabled, but obviously that's a possibility. Um, and obviously the motherboard manufacturers can pick and choose what they want to supply. There's some options here which are light blue, so it's an optional uh, 2.5G base T Ethernet and there's an integrated um, 10, 100 and 1 gigabit Mac interface as standard. Um, you can see there's some Intel firmware and platform technology here over an SPI interface. Wi-Fi available, the RAID options, um, high definition audio and sound, Intel Smart uh, technology. Um, I believe the chip is the Realtek 4080 off the top of my head, I think it is. It's slightly better than the previous version, which I can't remember what version that is. It's slightly better, but it's not a great deal of a jump. And then optional Optane. Um, interface as well so that's the sort of layout so you can see that what's important the memory directly into the CPU or the CPU's got access to memory directly obviously and uh, a couple of PCI lanes as well as well as um, the HDMI support obviously this HDMI support won't be available um, if you plug in a, a KF version chip it would just be redundant because you know the, the chip hasn't got that capability um, but obviously the motherboard will, will support it. It's just that if you buy a chip with KF, it, it won't be enabled. So that's the basic sort of overview.